Hello, my name is João and uh, on behalf of Porto and the North Tourism Board, I would like to welcome you to Braga. Today we are uh, on this magnificent uh, four-star hotel, Vila Galé Collection Braga, uh, owned by the Portuguese chain Vila Galé. Um, the elegant hotel building uh, gave new life to the historical uh, hospital of St. Marcos uh, that had been in function since 1508. Um, this hotel group is the second largest group uh, that exists in Portugal. Uh, with nearly three decades of experience, it has more than 30 units in Portugal and several in Brazil um, and is part of the ranking of the 200th largest hotel companies worldwide. It is one of the hospitality groups that heavily invested in innovation, in particular by partnering up with a disruptive local startup called Infraspeak, a Porto-based global tech company that is transforming the world of facilities management with a pioneer intelligent maintenance management platform. For that, and today, I am here in Braga with CEO and founder of Infraspeak, Flip Avila da Costa, to discuss Porto and the North as a formidable startup and innovation hub. Flip, hello and welcome to Braga. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Flip, let me quickly introduce you to our audience before we start uh, with our questions. In addition to being Infraspeak's founder and CEO, you are also the co-founder of Founder Founders, a community-driven scale-up incubator located in Porto and in Lisbon as well. Uh, you have been deeply involved in the local entrepreneurial ecosystem since the time you were a program manager. Uh, of the Startup Accelerator at Uptec. Uh, you have also been featured as one of the 40 business leaders of the future in Portugal by FEI. Uh, again, thank you for having you here. Let's explore a bit about Porto's relationship with entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your story, about how have you been involved in the city's innovation uh, landscape for quite some time. When did you decide uh, it was time to start your own venture and how was it to grow it in the city of Porto? So I am a software engineer by, by education, but since I can remember, uh, I always like building new things and doing new stuff. So I always knew sooner or later we're going to be creating uh, my own startups. And actually I did right after uh, my, my university time, but I failed, uh, didn't work properly. So after a few, a few months, I actually decided to work uh, for someone else to get more experience, also to get more money to, to sustain uh, the, the next project, right? And I ended up being lucky enough uh, to join UPETEC, the, the Science and Technology Park of the University of Porto. And during these five years that I was there, I helped around 250 startups, uh, more than 500 entrepreneurs, to start uh, to, to, to this early growth uh, stage. So I did learn a lot and um, get full interaction, not just with the Porto ecosystem, but, but with the national ecosystem, from investors to lawyers to uh, program uh, accelerators uh, and so on and so on. So um, after this, these five years, I was actually mentoring Luis, currently my co-founder. Uh, and um, Luis was saying that uh, he was a product guy. He wanted to be focusing on product and need someone else to focus on marketing, sales, finance, basically everything else. And uh, I decided to quit my job at the incubation center and join Luis to take him for speak to the market. But um, even though during these five years um, um, focus on, on InfraSpeak, this community thing always uh, I keep it with me, like after helping so many people, after being involved with the ecosystem. So together with other four founders, uh, we created Founders Founders. That more than an incubation center, we have actually three buildings, two in Porto, one in Lisbon, uh, is a community focus. So it's all about creating this peer-to-peer -peer mentoring between people that are having similar challenges of scaling uh, startups like, like mine, like many others in the city and the region. Very well. Um, Infraspeak is currently working with several clients from the hospitality industry. Uh, from lamps that need to be changed to the maintenance of, of elevators, there is an infinite number of, of tasks that we do not see 
but are definitely key and essential for infrastructures such as airports or such as hotels like the ones uh, we are today uh, that that they need to continue to function normally. Um, tell us a little bit more about the, how the technology behind InfraSpeak works, uh, how it helps the hospitality sector and how travelers and hosts can either indirectly benefit from it. And a, a, another question more specifically, what are the advantages for such um, technology in a hotel's event department? Sure. So, uh, as you said, uh, behind the curtains, right? So all the maintenance, all the cleaning, all the audits, all the energy management, basically the overall operation uh, of a hotel, but not just a hotel, like an airport, a shopping mall, a hospital, uh, need to get done to make sure everything works in a safe way, but also the quality of service that everybody is looking for is there. So basically, InfraSpeak is a project management tool to make sure everything goes accordingly, goes in an efficient manner. So from a simple like light bulb that uh, uh, someone, a host, uh, report to the reception saying, oh, this is not working, or even better, if like a quality audit that will go around the, the hotel and identify some of those problems, it can be managed within InfraSpeak. But also there is the preventive part of it, right? So for all air conditioning uh, systems, for like water pumps, generators and so on, you can do preventive tasks to ensure it not fails when it's most needed. So uh, right now, actually we call our key users, like the maintenance team, the cleaning team and so on, the invisible heroes, because all the work they do, uh, nobody called them to say, oh, thank you for, for doing it. But when things fail, people call to complain. So we want this platform to be a source of good life for, for them, to be able to help them do a good job and in parallel ensure all the quality and show the cost efficiency and so on and so on for the infrastructures we just said. Flip, COVID has definitely left a huge mark on the hospitality uh, and travel industry. How was it for InfraSpeak and what do you think startups can do to help sectors in crisis to recover? Actually, we have a great example uh, there because when the, the COVID pandemic uh, reached Europe, like back in March, April last year, what we saw was the tech community overall with special uh, highlights for the Porto and the North region to get together and find new solutions to help uh, the society overall, the, the, the country, fight against the pandemic. And we came up with the tech for COVID-19 that was a movement that started based on the group of entrepreneurs uh, in, in Portugal. And after three, four weeks was a group of more than 5,000 volunteers that created more than 70 different projects, tech projects uh, to, to fight against the pandemic. So from solutions to help nurses, doctors to find a, a room uh, close to the hospitals where they were associated. So they don't need to get back home with the risk of uh, infecting the families and so on, from solutions to help uh, find computers, laptops for students that need work, study from home, uh, and many other, other solutions, uh, was something that the overall community and technology as a whole put together in like really fast time, like a week, two weeks time, to, to help the overall society uh, fight the, the, the pandemic impact. Talking specifically uh, about uh, InfraSpeak, we also we create the placecheckup.com. So it's a completely free uh, platform where any facilities anywhere in the world can go there, register uh, the location, and basically follow a list of 30 tasks, 30 inspections, audits they need to do. And if they succeed uh, by doing this audit, they get a stamp, a placecheckup.com stamp, that uh, allow them to publicly say they are doing something to mitigate the risk. On top of this, we join actually, uh, we are uh, helping the tourism of Portugal with the clean and safe stamp. We are developing the technology behind the platform to make sure all the end users, all the tourists can see all the details about the stamp and who has and who does not have it. So there are certainly a lot of stuff uh, technology can do. And this is just a few examples of what the Porto, the region and the country are doing to help. Very well. Um, let's go a little bit uh, to the future and 
and look at, at the future and events and with such a strong trend uh, towards digitalization, do you think that company like yours will tap into this market and develop specific solutions for events? Sure. Um, I definitely think this, this the operation background, right? Uh, I think there is a lot to be done to ensure everything goes on a, on a safe way, on a, in an in a efficient way. But actually the, the trends that we're seeing happening is kind of this ultra personalization, like where you can basically dedicate uh, a lot of your operation to make sure the customer, the end customer have exactly what they're looking for. And if you can surprise them somehow uh, with that. So by, by combination of these B2C technologies to help you interact with your end customers, but also the backstage, right? That uh, allow you to, to, to deliver what you want. I think there are plenty of opportunities and uh, we definitely believe there's going to be an increase of demand for something like this. Mm -hmm. um, what is your personal take on how the future of tourism and hospitality will look like? Uh, what role do you think the technology that we have nowadays uh, will, will play in it? I think digitalization is basically going all around, right? Uh, one of the industries that we are tackling, like facility management, the construction industry, were somehow uh, a little bit left behind with this whole technology evolution, with the IoT technology, for example. So, talking specifically about the venues, the capacity, for example, to identify how many people are in a specific location or how many people attend a specific room or toilet, and then schedule the cleanings and all the operations around that not just based on time, I'm going to clean this for every four hours or eight hours, but something like I'm going to clean this after 100 people use it, uh, is something that can bring a lot uh, of efficiency and cost savings for many, many operations and with better results, with a better service for the end user. Very well, Flip, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much.